Good morning and welcome to the David and David on Real Estate Podcast. We are today on episode 103 and today we have a very, very special guest. We have Ash Alice from the Ash Alice Group with us today, joining us the number one team in Sutton Summit Realty for a lot of years in a row. Ash, we're so happy to have you on the podcast. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Ash, it's great, great to get you on. Uh, you know, first of all, you're a, a successful agent. I want you to tell us your story a little bit, but there's so much to talk to you about. And one is is your success, how you know your career, how you've risen through the ranks. But also, we're going to get into you know how you lead a team. We've talked about teams in real estate before, the pros, the cons, and if you do it right, I think David and I are both big supporters of teams, and nobody does it better than you do. So we're really Happy you're with us today so we can pick your brain on a few things. Thank you. I'd love to share. I'm here to share. Where can I start? Ash, tell us, I mean, I think it's a fascinating story. And, uh, you know, tell us at the very beginning, how did you get into real estate? Because I, I love that story. You know, I'm, I'm very proud of that story. You yeah. know, I, I'd yeah. love to share it with the listeners. Yeah, no, it's it's. it's so I used to work at the at a Scotia Bank, and I was the branch manager over at Eglinton and Credit Union. And at the time, Southern Summit was also at Eglinton and Credit Union. And the, the the broker Brian McGuire at the time would come into my branch and deposit checks every other day or whatever it is. So he would always coax me and say, "Hey, Ash, you should you should become a realtor. You should become a realtor." Of course, I paid no attention to that, but. About a year of him knocking this on my head, and one day I was like, maybe I do want to become a realtor. And, you know, what happened is we had twins at the time, and, you know, it was kind of very difficult with the twins. They had reflux, whatever, whatever. So coming in to work at sort of the 8 o'clock and leaving at the last person of the branch seemed like a bit of a challenge. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to become a realtor because I can make my own hours. This is what I thought. Right. So I was like, okay, let's, let's do this. Let's quit the job. I had some investment properties at the time and I was like, let's quit the job and let's define our own hours and get into self-employed. And that's how I got into real estate. Now, defining your own hours later, I really, I, I realized that that's just baloney, but, but that was the motivation at the time for me to get into real estate. So that was my first year, 13, 13, 14 years ago. Yeah. Brian and, McGuire was great at recruiting people from anywhere. I know he, he yeah. was former students of his. I think everybody was a potential agent that could, uh, yeah. you know, he would check up everybody. And if you he thought you had the material, the right material, he was, uh, he was pushing you along in that direction. Yeah. So that's great. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and here we are 14 years later. Yeah, we, we see a lot of that in the brokerage, you know, a lot of uh, people have been tapped on the shoulders and recruited by Brian. And, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. super humbled and, and very fortunate to, you know, keep uh, that legacy going. But uh, yeah. well, the hours are certainly crazy. But yeah. the difference yeah. is that at least here, the the hard work that you're putting in, you're, you're building your own business. Right. You're building your own business, you reap 100% of the dividends, right? And and that's big. Whereas when you work for a corporation, you know, you get paid a salary and, and you learn that self-employed, um, you know, with the tax benefits and if you take that skill and start translating it into other ventures like investing and stuff like that, you know, the, the money gets to be a lot better. Um, you know, I, was, I had a pretty good gig over there at the time and, you know, 10x that to some extent right so um yeah if you if you take the skills and real estate has a lot of potential to help you do well and and 10xing the skill i mean you know a lot of people look at realtors especially newer realtors coming to the market and they they think that the business is easy you know they think that you know how hard can this be you're out there you're showing houses you're you're networking, you know, you're, you're having conversations. It's an easy business. And, and that's the mistake where that a lot of people make coming into the industry, but yes. building any business is probably one of the hardest things you can do in the world. It requires a lot of time, a lot of sacrifice out of time away from your family. 
but the rewards are also great. But great rewards don't happen on their own. They happen with hard work. You know, I, I see all these successful realtors and other realtors always ask me, oh, how did this person get so lucky? How does business just appear? And the yeah. problem is they don't see all the hard work, the years and years of sacrifice that those people have put, put in to build their brands, to build their reputations, you know, to, to invest in their current customers, right? Like look at David Corman and, and Corman's LLP. We have a 34, 35 year relationship, David, every single time I, I say this number, it's growing, right? Because our relationship keeps growing and evolving, but look at how much work yeah. Corman's putting into their clients. You know, I, I look at you, Ash, and, you know, you have a full-time assistant, you have a team, you invest in properties, you, you buy, flip, you renovate. Like, it's just, it's astonishing, you know, listening to how hard you work and how much time and effort you put into your career. So, you know, I, I love the fact that you're on here today and sharing your story and, 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 you know, talking about hard work and what it takes to lead a successful team and, and have a really successful career in real estate. And, I hope that our listeners, you know, are, are going to be able to take away um, the fact that, it, you know, it takes a lot of work and it does take a lot of sacrifice to be able to get into those upper echelon of the business. Yeah. I, I just want to add, you know, it is a lot of hard work, but it's easy hard work. And if you have the discipline to do what's needed, you know, we're not talking rocket science, carrying bricks on your back. It's, it's nothing like that. It's just pounding the pavement having the dis self-discipline to drive yourself out of your couch, out of watching Netflix every morning and go out there and pound the pavement. And when I mean pound the pavement, I don't literally mean pound the pavement. It's having a coffee with your friend. Like that's, a, that's, a, that's not pounding the pavement. That's fun to me. So just doing those daily activities can get you business. And that I think is the difference between the winners and the losers in, 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 our, in our business. You know what, Ash, some, you know, young real estate agent starting out, you know, listening to this or watching this, I uh, might say, okay, well, you know, that's great. Ash made it 14 years down the road and now he's successful and he made it. But when you look back on it, at what point did you consider yourself successful? Like how long did it, did you feel it take? Was it year one, year two, year five? Like at what point in your career did you really feel like I can do that? Not only can I make a living, but I can make yeah. a good living, a good so, career. You know, in my first year that I joined Sutton, become a realtor, um, I had six months. That was it was a six month year, right? Like I came in half a year, and I remember doing six deals. Okay, commissions were lower, prices points were lower. Six deals. I was like, okay, you know, it's not really where what I was making last year at the bank. In year. In the first full year, either the first full year, I did twelve deals, one deal a month. I remember doing that. And I was like, this is doable. And I think it was even year one, full year or year two that I made six figures. And that was my goal because I was working at a bank and I was making $100,000 call it. And I was like, if I can make $100,000, you know, life is great. And I've hit my goal. So, so either year one or year two, I hit that $100,000 number. Now today, 100,000 is much easier to attain because mm. price points have quadrupled since back then. But, you know, 14 years ago, the average price was 400000 give or take. Okay, I don't remember. Um, so my number at the time was 100000 Then I set another benchmark. I was like, I want to make the top 10 list that Sutton had. Because every year they'd say, oh, top 10, number one, number two. Like, my goal is to make number top 10. And you know what? In year three, I think I made that top 10 list. And I was like, I want to make top five list, you know, I'd really love to make, and then I hit that. Then I was like, you know, I want to hit the top three. I did that. And I said, I want to be number one. And that was the growth. So it's always, you know, when did I, when was I happy? It, I, I don't know if that's the right answer. I like to challenge myself to push for more all the time because in that lies growth and, and that's the whole point of this. So, you know, we're, we're always growing, right? And, uh, and, and now there's a team and so on and so forth. Ash, I, uh, I remember one of the Christmas dinners. This is when I first joined Sutton Summit Realty. You and I were sitting at the same table near the uh, the head of the stage. And I remember we were talking commissions. We were talking numbers. We were talking future plans. Yeah. And I remember you said to me at that time that, 
um, you know, you consistently earn about $250,000. And I was uh, so taken back. This was, you know, this was probably like nine, 10 years ago. It was a long time. A quarter of a million dollars back then was, was a lot of commissions. I remember I was so taken back, but so impressed at the same time of, of what your accomplishments were, um, you know, and I was, my numbers were were below you and I shared with you at the at the time what my numbers were, they were six figures, but you know, they, they weren't that $250,000 mark. And I remember right. feeling inspired then by your success. So, um, you, you know, and what, what really drew me towards you is the fact that you were like really w- willing to share you know what you're doing, how you're how you're getting successful, uh, what your habits are, and you were very supportive. Like I, I still remember that conversation today, right? And that's the culture that we kind of built in Sutton Summit Realty. And you know Brian McGuire did a great job with that as well. And we're trying to you know carry on that legacy. But um, you know it's great to be surrounded by successful people like that. Thank you. You know, I, I, I do remember that call. And, you know, I, that, that was a point in my career which I couldn't break that 250 number, um, you know, and then made a couple of strategic moves and then I was able to break through that. And then I got stuck again at another ceiling um, around the 600 mark. I, I couldn't break through that. And then, you know, made another couple of moves and then I was able to to break through there again. So, and that's that's what I find as fun. Right, like you know, how do you how do you how do you grow this business? How do you how do you help others? How do you help your clients uh, build wealth? Because you know what, in in through this real estate journey, I'm able to buy real estate properties myself, and you know, we can talk about that at some point. But I'm sharing that with my clients, and then now with the team, I'm teaching them how to you know, can talk to their clients as well. Right, so so there's a lot of stuff in there. Yeah, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm pretty sure. Oh. Sorry, I'm, I'm pretty sure I was at that party too. And uh, as I like to attend all these parties, I may have been at the bar at the time when you had this conversation. I'm not sure, but 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 I listened to the conversations and I talked to the agents at these functions, and um, and it's interesting because you have a conversation with David, and he comes away from that being inspired by it, right? He's challenged by that. I want to be like Ash. I want if Ash could do it. Ash, smart guy, he's clever guy, but I think I could do it too, right? He's inspired, he's challenged. Yeah. And for every one of the, you know, David's attitude, that I talk to other agents there, and this isn't exclusive to Sutton Summit, other places too, that are part of a conversation like that, and they and there's a negativity that comes across them, and they feel defeated when they hit it. Why didn't I, you know, really? The market was that good that Ash could make that kind of money, and I, and I couldn't hit six figures, and... And woe is me, and I got bad luck, or like all these negative negative thoughts come in, and they're going the wrong way with that message. Instead of being inspired, so they're defeated. That, that that's that's also part of what's happening in our culture. You know, we're focusing on comparing to other people. Oh, you know that that I mean, Daddy has his face on every single bus stop. I'll never be able to achieve that. Yeah, good. You know what? Go be Sam McDaddy's friend, right? Go and learn from him. Don't take it as a as a as a comparison and bring yourself down. Be more like, hey, what if I roll with Sam and Daddy or whoever it is? You know, yeah. build your mastermind group, five people who are better than you, and then you will work your way up to that. Right? I remember when I started, again, I you know, I had nothing. I, I didn't know much, but I was like, oh, if I if I latch on to this agent, right? And at the time it was Victoria Teleria. And I remember she's still with our office and she was a top agent at the time. Uh, she still is. And I, and, I, and I sort of worked with her, walked with her, talked with her. And I kind of saw how she did things. And I was like, you know what? That's what I want to be. Because I had nothing to model after, um, you know, coming into the business. So look for a mentor. Look for someone who can get there. And don't say, oh, that person's doing all that. And then just go sit on a couch. Be like, hey, that person's doing all that. What Can I do that? How do I ask that person you know what people who've made it are happy to share uh, because there's you know so much out there there's a hundred thousand transactions taking place my team did 120 there's so many more you know it's not like we're hoarding it so yeah all you want to know when you attend those parties or, or these awards that the brokers do 
you want to know that success is available. Others are achieving it, even in a bad market, even in a bad year, there's still people that are achieving those successes. So then you have to look at yourself and say, you know, like, why not me? What am I not doing? Am I not working hard enough or am I not working in the right way? And it's usually, it's not working in the right way. And that's where you go, you, you find an Ash Alice, you find someone, pick their brains yeah. and, and go to them and, and, and learn from them because the success is available if you do it the right 100%. way. 100%. And if you listen to this, call me. I'm happy to, to share with you guys. You know, buy me breakfast or lunch. Um, I'll <laughs> spill. <laughs> You know, so yeah. So uh, let's talk about the current market. I mean, your team is very successful. You guys, yeah. you know, always have a lot of things, uh, a lot of fires in the pot. What are you guys seeing out there? What's <laughs> happening in the market? What are buyers feeling? What are sellers? Mm -hmm. feeling? What are you guys seeing out out there in the market? Yeah. All right. Good. Good. Look, this is a great question. And I'm going to answer this in twofold. As an agent, what I'm seeing is the following: I'm seeing the real estate hunger games. I've seen panic, uncertainty, realtors don't know what's going on, commission rep coming out. Um, just yesterday in the US, the, 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 the NAR announcement, you know, all this stuff, panic, all this, everything negative, interest rates are going up. You know, we can, we can talk about the world. But all I hear and see is negativity. Now, what do, how do I spin that? I take that all and I say, I see opportunity. Okay, and that's how I'm positioning my my view of what's going on in the market as a realtor. Because you know it's all doom and gloom. The world's coming to an end. The party's done. But I see opportunity because in this opportunity, you know, I see a hundred thousand agents leaving the business and across North America and this and that and all that. Great. You know what? Opportunity. I see agents who are listing houses cutting back on their marketing costs. They're not they're not marketing. Listings aren't selling. Whatever it is, because they're they're cost cutting because they don't have another deal in the pipeline. But you know what? Now is the time to step up, step it up because, you know, leaders are built, market leaders are built in these times because as, you know, uh, we come out of this and we've got about six months to a year, I, I think, and, you know, as we talk about the market, it's going to be like this for maybe a year and a lot of people will fall off. But if you can step it up and position your brand, position yourself as a leader, someone who's still in the game, you will exponentially grow. Like you'll see a compounded effect coming out of this. And all the great realtors out there today were probably, you know, doing the same thing in the last run 10, 20 years ago. I don't know when that was, but during in the 80s, probably in that shift, they are the ones who took off. So that is the opportunity, my friends. But if you're asking me on the flip side, what's going on in the real estate market? Listen, I think, you know, um, things are slow. Transactions are less. But that's also partly because of, I think, what we are feeding our clients, the media spilling down on the clients, negative, negative, negative. And uh, interest rates are having a huge impact on borrowing power and house prices. Um, and house prices. So I think what's going to happen in the next, for the rest of the year, we're going to be flat to down. And, and I'm more leaning to down, maybe another 5%. Um, I also think that will continue into next year. Um, but as soon as they start lowering interest rates, you know, we're having all this pent up demand again, starting to, to pent up. The Brace yourself, rate. right? Brace yourself. Brace yourself. So, you know, all this, we started in September, I guess, and maybe a little bit earlier, but people are like, okay, I'm going to wait for prices to drop. Well, they're on the sidelines, so they're on hold, and that's going to collect October, November, January, February, March, who knows, April, May, and it's going to build up. That's like six months, one year of people who could have purchased or transacted who have waited on the sidelines. And then all of a sudden, someone's going to say, we're done with interest rates, and we could also be potentially done with interest rate hikes. Um, there may be another quarter of a point, but who knows? But nevertheless, as soon as they start cutting, we'll see all these people run into the market because they're like, now's the time. But you know what? You're too late. It's the time, I believe, if you're looking to strategically buy your investment in the world, it's, it's now. Where you have time to get in and look at the house twice. So let me add, I completely agree with you. And I think there, there are 
hundreds of opportunities out there and agents need to switch how they think about the market. But when you present this point of view to your buyers and sellers, how are they reacting? Yeah, so I, it comes all comes down to education, right? You've got to you've got to have the facts to present to your client if it's a client you're talking to to explain to them the market cycle and how it works, and you've got to be able to explain to them yes, a recession is a good thing in this case because that is what they are the Bank of Canada is driving to. It's not a bad thing. I've got clients calling me. Oh, the world's going to fall apart. The, we're going to come into a recession. I'm like, yeah, that's the point of this. They're trying to do this. So, you know, slow down everything. And then that's a good thing. So you've got to have the statistics to back it up. You know, I'm, um, I'm always reading, following economics and whatever. So you can share that information with your clients and educate them. And as soon as you can educate them and they understand it, it's a different story. Um, so, and, and, and share with them other, other times where, you know, interest rates were expected to come down, like in January, you know, this year, what happened? January, February, the market just took off. Why? Because they thought they were done with interest rate hikes. So, so it's the same thing that's going to come. Um, there's a lot of immigration in the country and they have nowhere to live. So the supply, uh, the, sorry, the demand is there, but they're not jumping in. You know, I'm listing properties. I'm getting showing. I'm getting a lot of showing, but nobody's ready to put in an offer. Why? Because they're waiting for better pricing. So, so, so that's pent up demand, right? Yeah, Canadians have. Uh, I I think Canadians have spoken so loudly through COVID, through the high interest rates of of how they believe in real estate in Canada. Right. Yeah. And that's not a thing that's going away. That's a thing that we're going to keep building on with things like our immigration policy. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I'm hearing so many different figures being thrown around, but for sure, we're having a million new immigrants coming in. And, and you know, with our point system, a large majority of those other than the refugees that are coming in seeking salams, a large majority of those are people upper middle class doctors, dentists, entrepreneurs coming into the country with, with money. And, and, you know, I keep talking about this, but I sold my personal property in July and a new immigrant bought in Lauren park for over $2 million, eight months in the country. Uh, you know, she's a doctor from South Africa and he works in it and they were able, the first property that they purchased in Canada was a house that was over $2 million. This is the quality of people that we're letting in, you know, 10 years ago, or, or, you know, compare this to what's what happened in 89. I, I get a lot of agents asking me that was unheard of. That would have never happened. Right. But it's happening today. And we let a hundred, a, a million people um, like that into the country. And I'm hearing numbers being as high as 2 million people. Right. Um, so what, what I, what I heard in that comment, David, is that you live in a starter home of $2 million. That's what I heard. <laughs> and then you upgraded from a $2 million starter home to $4 million move up buyer. Right? <laughs> You're not laughing. <laughs> That's the yeah. GTA. That's the GTA. Yeah. Well, anyway. before we wrap up this segment, you know, it's it's one thing for um, seasoned veteran type agents to, you know, focus. I think your advice is great. Like, educate your clients. The more information they get, the more comfortable they're going to be. The, what about for new agents starting out? Like, they they can't, they have trouble just getting in front of people to be able to present that information. There's some yeah. advice you can give to those that are just starting? How do they get in front of people? Yeah, so, you know, one of the guys on my team, Michael, he's working with a lot of leases, okay? And I think that's, you know, in real estate, this is a career, this is a marathon, it's not a sprint. So he's working towards the long term. He's looking at finding his lease clients so they're able to buy a year or two down the road. That's one of the other things, you know. Um, but I think what's working out there today is actually working. Okay, and that it's literally working. So get out there and and get working. And, and what does that mean? You know, um, what what does it mean to work? Like for example, let's say Mondays you're gonna go on house tours. Just go book houses in your neighborhood. Check the sheets, see what's active, sold, sold conditional, whatever it is. Understand the market. Tuesdays 
and, and this is something that we're doing to connect with our clients. Um, we're doing a CMA for all our clients. It's an annual review. Uh, very important. You're a mutual fund, you're a social bank, whatever. They send me a statement every quarter. Why aren't we, the real estate professionals, sending our clients a statement to our clients, letting them know, one, that they are their realtor, and two, this is what's going on in the market. You want a review. You want to talk about interest rates, what your options are, et cetera. Um, so that's possibly your Tuesday, Wednesdays. Um, you know, social media, get out there. What are you doing? Are you advertising? Are you a secret agent? Do people know that? Thursdays, start making phone calls. Call everybody in your phone. Use two, three, six, seven, nine hundred people in your phone. Start there. Fridays, take the day off. Go celebrate everything you accomplished um, <laughs> during the week. Like celebrate those small wins. You, you don't need to hit a, a big home run. And then Sundays, open house. You know, houses are sitting. You can actually do open houses. Um, do that. Market the street. Knock the doors on the 50 to the left. There's so much stuff you could be doing. And this is how you meet people and and get that business, get your face out there. So that's what I think new agents or anyone should be doing, not sitting there moping and going, what's the next Netflix show to watch? Um, that's not going to do it. And oh, yeah, if you're a new agent. Steps. Right, Ash, take, take small steps. Rome wasn't built in a day. You know, so all what, what agents don't understand, you know, they look at a successful agent like you, they look at, you know, they talk to other successful agents and they get overwhelmed, like, oh my God, but you know, how do you bite food? You know, one, one bite at a time, right? How, do, you know, the million mile mark starts with a single step. Like you got to start somewhere, right? And you don't have to aim high aim small, but it's the consistency and the repetitive pattern of doing the little things. Like David Corman, if if at the beginning of this, you know, uh, podcast endeavor, I told you we're going to get to 103 podcasts, like you'd probably think I'm crazy, right? But we, right. we did it. How do we do it? Right. We did it and you'd feel overwhelmed. We, well, we're trying to achieve 100 podcasts. No, like, let's just try and get through one. You know, let's see, <laughs> right? And, and we'll work on that. And then do the, you can't think, oh, you know, how are we going to do a hundred? What are we going to talk about? Right. It's, a, it's anything you do. You got to, I like your plan, Ash, step by step, day by day, but, but have a plan. And and if you can't do all those seven things I said, or six, six, yeah, it sounds overwhelming. How am I going to do it? Just pick one. Just say, I'm going to do open houses. Okay. What do I need to do? I need to get an open house, but I don't have a listing. Well, you know what? Let's call the office. Who's got listings? Start there on Monday, get a listing by Tuesday. Wednesday, prepare some flyers. Thursday, go and don't, don't knock the open house. Friday, um, take the day off because you, you got you to gotta recharge. And then Saturday, Sunday, do the open house. Maybe you pick up a client. Great. You know, and then do that again. And then you'll get better at it and more efficient. Now you add a second piece to that. Yeah. So, Ash, this has been, uh, been amazing. Thank you for sharing all that wisdom with us. We're going to have you back again and we're going to talk about teams because I think, you know, you mentioned a couple of different income uh, ceilings and how you were able to overcome them. So we want to dive more into that, unpack that more information. I think there's a lot of agents that are experiencing the same struggles that you did early on in your career. And I want everybody to come back and, and, and tune into the next episode because we're going to dive deeper into some of these things and we're going to unpack how you're able to go ahead and get from here to the next level up. Thank you. Thanks, Ash. Ash thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for, for being on. And we'll see everybody next time. Thanks for having me. Take care.